So in this video, I wanna talk about a secret tool that can really improve your photos that I found out about in Lightroom a few months ago. Morning everybody, it's fantastic to see you all again. So this is the first video that I've made for probably a month now. Um, you have seen a few videos a, a few weeks ago, but they were made quite a long time ago. Obviously, I've had my back operation now, and um, by the fact I'm making a video, that's got to be good progress, hasn't it? I have um, had some issues with my back in that um, I've had some swelling in my back, and that means that I can't really walk very well. So I think it's gonna be a few weeks, maybe a month, before I can get out and, and, and do some photography outside, which is really frustrating. Um, but I do have this little drone. <laughs> so DJI sent me this um, DJI Mini 3 Pro, and I'm gonna do a video on this and um, shoot in drone photography. So that's something I can do in my garden. So that's gonna come probably next week, maybe the week after. Okay, onto this video, and it's all about Lightroom and this secret little tool, which is, I think I've spoken about it a couple of times before, but I guarantee you that you'll find this useful. So make sure you keep watching all the way to the end because um, some of the best bits are, 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 are right at the end. Okay, and also if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Right, let's get into it. So the secret tool is in the masking tools here. So if you click this little round icon here, you'll see you can create a new mask. And one of the things you can do is select sky. So in this particular instance here, then this is a really good um, use of it. I can select the sky and it selects the sky in this scene, doing a really good job of going around all this tree. Now you could just go and change the exposure on that, but I find that when you use select sky and change the exposure, then it changes the whole sky the same. I think it looks better if you put a graduated filter on it, and this is where this tool comes in. So if you click the option button on a Mac, then, and I'll put the command for a PC down here somewhere, but if you click the option button on a Mac, you see this little thing here saying intersect, and that means that you can intersect masks together, and that ability to intersect masks uncovers so much potential in Lightroom. So. This one is a good example, so let me show you this. So I've got the sky, and then quite often what I do is I intersect it with a linear gradient. And what that does, if I just drag over this linear gradient here, you will see that I've now got a linear gradient intersected with this sky. And you can see on the mask now that it's, it's just sort of softly going down behind that tree. And now if I just darken that, it's a much more pleasing effect on the sky. Can you see how it just sort of graduates into the lighter tones at the bottom of the image? I find that just works so much better. So this is a really good example. Um, another good example where you might want to use that is this example here. So again, I've got a drone shot actually here. Um, I might want to go and click select sky, it's gonna go and select the sky. If I just darkened it all, then I think it looks really odd around here because it's just too dark at the bottom. But if I just go and click this mask and then click intersect with a linear gradient and do that and then darken it, you can see that it's a much, much more pleasing effect. So that's one way of using it, um, intersecting it with a sky. Another way of doing it is using it with the brush tool, and this is probably the way that I use it most of the time. So let me go on to this woodland shot here. So I've got a woodland shot here, and say I want to go and brush on some brightness just on the side of this um, branch here. So what I could do is I could go to the mask here, I could click um, color range, and I could click this tree trunk here. And that's done a good job of selecting the tree trunk, but it's also selected all the other brown things within the scene. But what I can do is I can intersect that color range with a brush. Now at the moment, I've obviously not brushed anything on. So at the moment, I've just got that brown to paint on basically. So I'm gonna do, um, just have a, a brush with a bit of a feather, um, and then I'm gonna have a 40 or 50% flow. So if I go over twice, it'll provide the whole effect. So now what I can do is I can just brush, brush on that brown effect. Now, obviously what I wanna be able to do is I wanna increase the exposure a little bit, 
Maybe I just want to add a little bit of warmth to those highlights and maybe just reduce the highlights and add a bit more texture. And now what I can do, obviously it's done it everywhere here at the moment, but what I can do is where I brush is where it's going to apply that effect. And you can see that it isn't actually applying it to the leaves. So if I go over and hover over that, you can see it's just applied it to the trunk and it hasn't gone over those leaves because I'm just selecting where brown intersects with the brush. It's really good, really, really, really useful that. Another good way of using it, if I go on to this shot here, so this is um, a shot in the Faroe Islands, and maybe I want to go and add a radial gradient and I want to increase the brightness maybe of this central area, because I think that'll look good. Add some more contrast and maybe increase the whites. The problem with that is, I didn't really want to increase this area here. Now, I could mask that out and be, and be a little bit careful, but I don't think it needs to be super careful. All I need to do on that radial gradient is intersect it with a brush. Um, and that means that I've still got that nice soft radial gradient going out from the middle. The reason I just don't want to do this with a brush is that you, you want to still have that soft radial gradient, but you want to apply brush where you want that to apply. And it, it just means that you're getting the best of both worlds, really. So now I can just brush it on. And so what I can do is I can just go and brush it knowing that when I go up here, it's going to be nice and soft and it's just going to do a great job of it up here. But then when I get down here, I can just be a little bit more careful around this. I'm not bothered if it goes on a little bit, but I don't want it to go super dark. And that has meant that I've just created something that is really believable. I've kept those cliffs a little bit darker, which is really good. And it just makes it a lot better, really. Okay, the next one is, again, one that I use all the time, which is intersecting a radial gradient with a luminance mask. So let me show you on here. So this is a shot that I took in the Lake District, this amazing light. And I just want to make that glow just a little bit softer. So the usual way I do that is I just create a um, radial gradient and I'm just going to just put that about there. Maybe I'll move it over that way a little bit. And then a good way of doing it is just reducing the dehaze. So you can see as I reduce the dehaze, I'm creating a softer glow there. Maybe I want to reduce the clarity to make it even softer. And maybe I just want to increase the brightness a little bit of it. Um, I've overdone this a little bit probably just to show it in the demo, but the problem here is that I didn't want to increase the brightness of these trees because we're seeing the shadow side of those trees. So the way to do that is I can just intersect that radial gradient with a luminance range. So I can just go and select this luminance here. And what that's going to do is you can see, can you see it's just not selecting that tree? Now I could, I could think, okay, well that's maybe just a bit harsh. So I can go and I can tweak this and I can say, okay, I want to, I want it to start at the whites and go softly towards the darker areas. So basically what's happening is it's selecting that radial gradient and then anything of luminance from white through to around about the sort of mid tones down here. And it's got a nice soft, um, uh, part to it. But if I get rid of that luminance range, can you see the trees have just gone bright as well? Now you might like it better like that, but there's quite a lot of op opportunities for this because quite often if you do a radial gradient, it might go over something you think, oh, I didn't want that to go softer. Um, there's so many things that I do it for. Like for instance, this one's a really good example of it, where here I might want to do a radial gradient and I might want to darken the cliff in the background, but not darken this cliff so much. And th th there's a difference in luminosity between those two cliffs. So by combining, intersecting that radial gradient with the luminosity mask is so powerful. This intersect thing is so, so powerful. Well worth doing. Okay, the final thing that I just want to show you is that you can you can do the intersect with um, a radial gradient with a different mask, like a linear gradient. So let me just show you this. So for instance here, say I've got a radial gradient on this sky here. And I may do it like that. And I might think, okay, I want to just reduce the clarity of the sky. I want to make it look a bit softer. 
and a little bit warmer. Just now, again, you might think, okay, well, it looks okay on the C, but I don't want to soften the C so much. So then what you can do is you can say, I want to intersect that with a linear gradient and I can just put a linear gradient like this. And now I've got just, probably want to, I've just got now a soft gradient linearly going through from the C to the actual sun there. And I've not lost those sharpness um, elements within the C here. Once you start using this, you'll find so many uses for it. So to do it, you just click option when you're on your mask and you can then intersect it. You can intersect multiple masks as well. So maybe you wanna get something like this and then you wanna brush it on. You can intersect as many things as you want. And it's basically where those masks cross over is where you use them. It is just so powerful. It makes my editing so much quicker, which is fantastic for me with a bad back. Okay, uh, that, that was it really. Um, I wanna just say one more thing about um, something that I'm really passionate about, which is the World Landscape Photography Competition. We're raising money for Ukraine um, and the Red Cross operating in U Ukraine. There's still a few weeks left to enter your photos. Um, I've had a few questions as well. Um, people have asked about what category to put it in. Um, the, the, the details of that are on the website. Um, I'll put a link below. But basically, if it's a vista, um, then that's basically a, a, a view um, that could be a lake or some trees in the distance or some mountain ranges. Seascapes is obvious, it's anything by the coast. Um, and then woodland is where you're in the woodland or it's an individual tree or it's all about the trees. Basically, what I'd say is that woodland and seascapes are pretty obvious. Anything that's not woodland and seascape is probably vista. Um, so, and the other thing is that don't be too worried if you get it in the wrong category, we will change it into another category if we don't think it's in the right category. Um, thanks for everyone that's entered so, so far, um, but it'd be great if more people could enter. Just because you're a beginner, don't think that you won't get anywhere. Um, there's loads of people that have won things in the past that just didn't expect. So you've, you've got a, a good chance you might have produced something that you just didn't think was good because we're our own harshest critics. Um, and also I'm going to be reviewing some random photos from there as well. I'm going to do as many as I can and I'm going to create a, a separate video that I'll share with everybody that entered. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm going to go and play with my drone in the garden. Sounds weird, doesn't it? But anyway, I'm <laughs> this is so light. This drone is just ridiculously light. Um, it feels a bit like a toy, but I've, I've, I've messed about with it. And spoiler, it's pretty epic. You've probably seen reviews if you're into drones, but this is a pretty epic drone. And also it turns that way as well. So you can do like portrait style as well as landscape, which you used to be able to do with the first DJI drone. Good. That's it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you next Sunday. Bye.